because it, those trials, those tribulations are going to be there. But the thing is, we walk through them in perfect peace because we believe what God said. And if you want to go back to Isaiah, I quoted from Isaiah 55, go back to Isaiah 43. Want a little homework for this week? Read Isaiah 43, where God says that you're precious in his sight. And then he gives others in your place. That if you go through the fire, you'll not be scorched and burned. If you go through the waters, you'll not, be, you'll not drown. His prompt, that's his word to you. And the question then boils down to, do you believe it? And if you believe it, you'll have perfect peace. And if you don't believe it, and I'm not saying, it's not a matter of whether you go to church. It's not a matter of whether you tithe. It's not a matter of whether you dress properly on Sunday. It's a matter of whether you believe God's word. The pact that he has made with you. Because that is peace. His pact, his pacts, his pachem. It is his peace that comes through his word. Amen. Okay. And no, I was just thinking about it. He, he is in control. He is in control. He is faithful. He never fails. No, that's why I read that other that verse. Yeah. From, and this is, you know, consistent through Scripture. Not one promise Not that one. he has promised has failed to come to pass. You mentioned pact. There, in a legal agreement, there needs to be three things. In, in, in United States law, for a contract to be valid, there need to be three things, yes. What are they? What are they? There has to be an agreement. There has to be uh, the compensation for the transaction. There has to be something that pays for it. Otherwise, in other words, if you enter into a contract with somebody and there's no financial... Uh, right. There, there has to be an offer. Yeah. And acceptance, acceptance, and, and payment, and payment. And in in this act is is what you're doing is a a, a legal agreement is is a pact. So you could say salvation is an offer, it's acceptance, payment. and payment. That yeah. payment on the cross. You, you so could, the whole yes. thing is <clears throat> the only way to get. The peace that that we're talking about is to accept the Prince of Peace dying on the cross. Absolutely, that Mark, Mark, Mark brings up that's a good point. I haven't said that in a long, long time, but that's exactly right. In law, there, re, there requires that to be a, a valid, to be a valid pact, to be a valid covenant, to be a valid contract. There has to be an offer and acceptance and payment. The offer is. It says in Deuteronomy, I set before you life. life. Choose life. Mm -hmm. God offers us life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him shall have eternal life. So that's God's offer. Right. That's, that's his offer. We accept that by faith. We're the, you know, you, you got to be the whosoever who receives this offer from God. Right. And the payment has been made. And this is why Paul says in Romans chapter 28, in Romans chapter 8 rather, that if, if God loved you so much that he gave his only begotten son, what good thing would he withhold from you? Mm. If God is for us, who would be against us? Mm. This is where peace comes from. This is why Paul had this incredible peace demonstrated throughout his you know, life as an apostle. Mm. is the fact that he believed in God's love. What can separate me from the love of God? And this is how you get to know what that agreement is. Is in the Word. Is in the Word. You've got to read it. You've got to know yes. what's in there. And overall, and we, I talked about this a little bit last week, one of the things, the evidence of a redeemed life, is you need to be feeding on His Word. Yes. Because that redeemed life is only nourished and sustained by God's Word. Man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. You know what? Bread and chocolate and steak and hamburgers and chicken that that may keep your flesh alive but who ha who you know it's your flesh that's the enemy of your spirit that's right. the only thing that will keep your spirit alive in christ is feasting feeding on the word of god yes. so you know if you're if you are the redeemed of the lord well first of all say so oh so. You know. but then you need to examine yourself and say you know how much time am i spending in the word of god and it's not, just a it's not just a matter of sitting down and reading the Bible. It's meditating. Paul, you know, David talked about meditating on the Word. Mm -hmm. Read the Word. Get up in the morning. Spend, spend a little time in the Word. Even if, I mean, if that's all you can do. 
But get some word in, your, in the forefront of your mind before you start that day. And then meditate on it. And let God speak to you. Have a conversation with the Lord throughout the day about what you've read. You've got to learn the Word of God. And I'm not just talking about memorizing Scripture. You know, the Pharisees of Jesus' time were great at memorizing Scripture. These guys literally knew Scripture backwards and forwards. And yet, they did not recognize the Word of God when He walked through their midst. Oh, my brother, do you know the Savior? So wonderful, kind, and true. He's the rock of my salvation. There is honey in the rock for you. Oh, there's honey in the rock, my brother. There is honey in the rock for you. Leave your sins for the blood to cover. There is honey in the rock for you.